Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. I'm Orufo Ezaga and this is yet another week, another um, Tuesday of Sports Business Talk. Saturdays are for the weekends as we say, uh, sorry, Saturdays and Sundays, the weekends are for sports entertainment and Tuesdays we talk sports business. Today we have another exciting package for you. We're going to be talking about media. We're going to be talking about um, um, streaming. Um, we're going to be talking about what has happened in the EP MPFL season and the fact that we have had in this, um, this is the first season when we've had both a, a television partner as well as a streaming partner, all right? The MPFL is growing. More and more people are talking about it. The young guys on social media are doing an excellent job, and I'm speaking about the young journalists. They're doing an excellent job in promoting the league. More club owners are getting um, involved in, in, um, in football at a very high level. This year, two private clubs are supposed to join the MPFL, although we lost two private clubs last season uh, when Doma United and Sporting Lagos were relegated. But this season, we're going to have um, Beyond Limits as well as, as um, Ikorudu City FC. So, you know what, you Lagos fans are lost out when Sporting Lagos were relegated. Lagos is still going to be on the MPFL calendar for the new season because we're getting on board Ikorudu City FC. And this Ikorudu City FC, here's the thing about them that excites me. They have... A, a, a group of young guys on social media that, that are part of this club with huge um, social media followings. And they're going to drive this club, you know, the popularity of this club and football in Lagos generally. The only thing I think is a bit of a regret for me is that Sporting Lagos didn't stay um, in the league so that we could have what would have been like a, a Lagos mainland versus a Lagos island um, derby. All right, but so today we're going to be talking to two foreign investors who are betting on Nigerian sports. Right, first would be um, Basil Kabani, who should join us from London, uh, but we're still uh, trying to establish a connection with him. While secondly, in the, the second in the studio with me is Mr. Asha Theory Alon. He's um, the CEO of Africa Sport Network. By the way, Basil Kabani uh, is the CEO of, of um, Propel Sports Africa. They're the streaming partners um, for the MPFL. All right. We're going to be talking at least uh, with Mr. Um, Asha Alon first. And then when Basil joins, we'll, we'll pick up from wherever um, he joins, right? So prepare yourself if you're if you in the media. We've been talking media, um, broadcasting, sports broadcasting for a while now. Over the last three weeks, we've had at least two people talk to us about sports broadcasting. Today, I would um, delve in deeper into that because these are guys who are right now experiencing it, experiencing it at a very high level um, because, of course, the MPFL is the biggest sports property we have in Nigeria today. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a minute so that you can, you can stretch your legs, uh, grab, it, grab a cup of coffee, uh, invite a friend to listen to the program. Because sports is going to be a big business in this country. And the more you listen to it, who knows, the more, perhaps you, you, the more opportunities you get to hear something that could you know, inspire a new business idea in you. Uh, maybe, who knows, your, your next big business idea is in the sports industry. So take a minute, and when we return, the business begins. Welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. Unfortunately, um, we, 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 might, we will not be having uh, Mr. Basil Kabani on the program. Um, so we're going to talk to Mr. Asha Theory Alon. 
Now, don't worry about it because Asha Terry Along is a very authoritative figure in sports media and sports media broadcasting. And he has a lot of things to say um, based on his own experience in this country where he and his partners are building the Africa Sport Network to cover sports in this country and across the African continent. He's also the sub-licensee of Propel and his company is in charge of, of streaming the MPFL matches outside of the Nigerian territory to the rest of the world. Hello, Asha. How are you? Hi, Rufo. Pleased to meet you. Pleasure to be here again. Uh, it's always nice to be invited. Mm. I looking, I'm looking forward for an interesting uh, discussion. Okay, Asha. Today, you and I are going to do a marathon. You know, it's... Um, we are here. You're here. You're ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about... Um, the, the season that just, that just passed, you know. You, you were here at the start of the season, right? With uh, ASN joined at the start of the season, didn't you? So ASN as a platform, as a news platform, was mm. there since day one. Okay. As a streaming platform, we joined uh, match day 25, 26. Okay. Uh, that was uh, roughly like uh, 10 weeks ago mm. that we did our first uh, live streaming and then, of course, reruns as much as the, as mm. much as the uh, user wants to watch. Mm. And um, it's been growing ever since. Uh, of course, like every new streaming service, mm. uh, we had our first uh, steps in the mud. Uh, and I think that today we have a very nice product. Mm. We have a very, the streaming is high quality. Mm. Uh, our partners, Popel Sport, are giving us very good support. Mm. And uh, we see the numbers growing, growing nicely. Mm. Um, and we are preparing lots of new things towards the new season. Mm. Uh, I can say about NPFL this season 23-24 uh, I'm satisfied not fully satisfied with like every business like everything everything can be better mm. uh, but the team has done a fantastic job uh, and um, we are definitely growing nicely and the emails and the messages that we are getting from the users mm. are definitely encouraging okay Asha you know you you when I when I speak with you you know you you, you tell me about numbers you know, these are numbers that are authenticated numbers. You know, uh, you can track these numbers. Of course. And you're saying that um, viewership, uh, sorry, interest is growing. What, what, what do you make of, of the future of the NPFL based on what has happened in, in, in this season that you participated in? So it, it's a bit of a complex question because mm. the future of NPFL depends on many Some elements factors, that yeah. needs to join together mm. in order to make it uh, an interesting product. Mm. At the moment, it's a product. Mm. It needs to grow and grow much more than it, than it is now. The potential mm. is definitely there. Mm. And it's a joint effort of the media, of us mm. as media and streaming service, mm. um, federation, the club owners, mm. the fans, uh, if everybody together are working or everybody are working together and uh, this product will become amazing this product will be uh, up to its potential and we will see more and more people from around the world looking on NPFL and this will be beneficial to everybody because once the product becoming interesting you'll have more agents more other clubs more players from Nigeria being transferred, more money flowing in. When more money flowing in, you'll have uh, 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 more club owners that will invest more. Yeah. You'll have uh, richer club owners that mm. will come into, into the game. Uh, the media will be able to, to deliver more games and higher quality games mm. and so on. Um, and by the end of the day, that's the whole idea, creating this amazing product that apart from having EPL and La Liga and the mm. Europeans and so on, uh, we will speak about the Nigerian League and Nigerian Cup mm. in the same, in the same yes. sentence. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, Asha. One of the areas I, I, we have always had challenges is, is the fans, getting fans to be interested in, in, in our football, in our, in our clubs, um, and in the league. Yeah? 
And I would say that in this past season, I, I could see that there was a bit of a, a shift. You know, fans were a lot more engaged. And, you know, even our stadiums were, were a lot fuller. You know, there's still a long way to go. But, you know, if, if you look at the Oriental Derby between Rangers and, and uh, Eimba, and then you looked at games in, in uh, Ibadan involving shooting stars and, and the like, and then some games in Lagos with, let's not even talk about the North, because the North is always um, um, a different experience with lots of fans. You know, so I can feel personally that there's growing interest, yeah? But do you think that, um, where would you like to see more happen? You know, like you said, there are a lot of moving parts, you know, in the ecosystem. Where do you think you would like to see the most work done in the new season? Because everything can work perfectly at the same time. Where would you like to see the most work done? So, a uh, fantastic question, really, because... Mm. This is our, I think, our biggest challenge when we're our biggest challenge when we're speaking about NPFL mm. is the crowd. Mm. And when you're watching today the matches mm. and you see that the stadium is mostly empty, mm. you're thinking, what is this product? What is this match? Is it not an interesting match? What's yeah. going on? Nigeria yeah. has more than two hundred million people, mm. and the stadium is mostly empty. Uh, if I go to the stadium in Mobulaji Johnson, it's not a big stadium, mm. it's only 5,000 people. people yeah. And 5,000 people, you will see maybe in the crowd 300, 400 mm. people, this is it. Mm. When you're sitting in Lagos Island, just bring the kids from the street to fill up the stadium. Mm. Uh, this one, it's on the club owners. Okay. Us media, we need to speak about it, we need to mediatize it, we need mm. to speak uh, uh, and do whatever we're doing, what we're doing now. Okay. This is it, we can't do more. More than that, yeah. I can't bring physically people to the, uh, to the stadium. Mm. This is on the club owners. When the club owner uh, is sitting and watching the match and it doesn't disturb him that the stadium is empty mm. and he's watching like he's watching FIFA at home mm. and for him it's just a toy, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so club owners, they need to do much, much, much more in order to allow uh, people to get into the stadium they need to do much more in order to promote the matches of their own clubs. It will create income for them. Mm. It might create a small expense. You, know, you need to clean the stadium afterwards. Maybe you need to have security and so on. But by the end of the day, it will create this ambience that we have in each and every football stadium around the world. If I'm going to Madrid and I have 80,000 people in the stadium and it's fully sold out yeah, for yeah, the season, yeah. And I'm going here and the stadium has two or three hundred people in it. It doesn't make any sense in a city like Lagos that mm. has 20 million people. Mm. So this is on the club owners. And I cannot say the kids needs to promote it more. The kids, they are just fans. Uh, we, are, we can speak on the radio. We can speak on, speak on TV, websites, and do more articles. By the end of the day, the client will read it if the ticket is not available. Mm. If... Uh, the option even to buy it, the entrance to the stadium is not available, mm. then it doesn't make any sense. It's like a, a product that is uh, uh, still in, uh, seed in the ground. Mm. Uh, so this is something that the club owners should work with the big brands, even to do cross promotion. When you're buying a ticket, you know, maybe you'll get uh, 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 something as a gift. Or so for it will make sense to everybody. And then once the stadium will be full more people will get interested mm. because then they will step out of the match, they will speak about it. Uh, it will create a buzz within their neighborhood, it will create a buzz between the kids, it will create a buzz between the adults, and then it will make this product becoming an interesting product. Let me, were, you involved in, in what, in, were you involved in football in your own country? Yeah? Um, at a high level, or d were you really involved in football? In, in, in what country would this be? Um, France? Because Al alone, you are a man <laughs> of the world. So, so, so I'm a multinational, so yeah. I, I, I lived in many countries and yeah. grew up in several countries. So I okay, feel, I feel comfortable in, in, yeah, in other countries. countries. But speak about the US, yeah. that's where we are coming from yeah. mostly. The stadiums are full. 
Why? What do the clubs do? What sort of things the, do you think? First of all, the management of the league will be in charge of mediatizing. Mm. being charged not just saying okay you're the licensee mm. do whatever you want mm. they will follow you you'll have kpis mm. you will have things to do in order to make it happen mm. moreover club owners they understand the value of selling tickets selling merchandise mm. uh, and they will be in charge to do a campaign before the season mm. pre-sales and so on to fill up the stadium sold out you go to any stadium around Europe, you go to any stadium around the US, football, basketball, American football, mm. doesn't matter. The stadiums are fully sold out for the season. Mm. People are buying membership for the whole season and this is it. You don't even need to open the uh, cashier at each one of the matches because the match is sold out in advance. Mm. So this is something that needs to be done here by the club owners. They need to understand Lagos is relatively a small stadium. Mm. Go to Aqua Ibom. It's an amazing stadium. Mm. It's so nice, mm. but it's empty. Mm. Um, so when a club owner can fill it up with 20,000 people, 10,000 people, each one will pay, I don't know, even if it's 500 Naira, which is an affordable amount, it will bring him income. Yeah. This is it. Okay, so there's something we've spoken about um, a lot in recent times on, on this program and that's community relations how to build communities as a foundation for clubs to to thrive so we're going to look at two things yeah the club should build a foundation yeah because that foundation as you have you have said is what then drives the property when you want to go outside of your environment for instance if a man in England is watching a football match in Nigeria, there are 300 people in a 5,000 stadium. He asked the question that you asked you know, just not long ago when you are talking about it. What's going on here? Is, the, if, is this game not interesting? What sort of product is this? So if you win the fans and there's a packed stadium, they feel the energy, they feel the, the interest, they feel like this is something that they should be a part of. Do you understand? So, We've been talking about that, and with the, I think personally that clubs have to go out into the communities, bring in young people to come and to come and you know maybe play in uh, play in their youth teams or or do some um, awareness, some social cause or something, so that you feel like this is not just a club; it is our club. But having said that, Ash Asha, what about the league itself? What sort of promotion should the league do? The storytelling around the league cannot be driven by individual clubs. The, the big picture of the league, the Oriental Derby story, for instance, was not told by just Rangers. Rangers participated, Imba participated, but then on the larger scope, we saw that you know, the media participated big time, you know, talking about these two big Eastern teams. So it cannot just be the clubs. Who else is out there? So first of all, I think at first it's the clubs. Yeah. If you're saying it's not just the clubs, yeah, it's not just the clubs, mm. but it's like 80% the club. Mm. Why? Because the club has its own heritage. They have their own brand. Mm. They want to deliver their message. They mm. want fans. Yeah. If I'm a club owner, I want to have fans for my club, yeah. okay? Mm. So I want to invest in my story, in my branding, mm. to fill up the stadium. Mm. Uh, even if you're telling me, okay, so we are weak on the marketing side. Mm. Doesn't matter, you're sitting in the middle of Nigeria. Mm. Just bring kids free of charge into the stadium to cheer up mm. your team and tell them, okay, free, free entry, but cheer my team. They will come. It will create an ambience, mm. this ambience that doesn't exist today. Yeah. Okay, you will have uh, uh, 20 people with trumpets and tam-tam, and, 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 tum -tum, uh, and, and this is it. So this is, I think, 80% it's the club owners, that they, they need to tell their story. Asha, let, let me give you an example. In the 70s, when ESPN took over the, the NBA rights, the stadiums were empty as well. Do you get And sponsorship was low for, for the NBA because... In fact, as a matter of fact, at that time, collegiate basketball had more sponsorship than the NBA. But what did ESPN do? ESPN was the broadcaster. ESPN 
came up with incentives to fill the stadium because they didn't want to fill against the film of against course. the backdrop. That was that was the broadcaster that was in the clubs. You know, I, I'm not saying that the clubs don't have a big role to play. I'm just saying that this is not a situation where we say, oh, you guys do your bit and then let everybody do theirs. It's, it's a coming together of, of different, uh, um, of different um, competencies and, and different interests to drive this thing. Or, or what do you think? I think it's a mindset, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, me as a broadcaster and we are the streaming uh, uh, service alongside with Propel of mm -hmm. the MPFL, mm -hmm. I cannot go to the stadium and fill it up. Mm. I cannot go to the stadium and say, guys, uh, I brought with me 5,000 kids, mm. let them enter free mm. of charge. Because the club owner, or I don't know whom, will ask, uh, what about the cleaning? What about the mm. security? Mm. What about... So we cannot fill it up. We can work with them. We mm. should work with them, okay? We should do our part. I'm not yeah. saying it's just on them, but mm. it's 80% on them, okay? Mm. I cannot tell the story of the club. I cannot build the heritage of the club. Mm. I can assist him. I can deliver his message. They can build the brand through our Platform. medium. Yeah. Uh, and this, we are, we are here. Any club that is coming to us and any club that will come to us, we mm. will deliver their message free of charge. Mm. It's not even something that we want to charge money for. Mm. Any PR message, any publicity, whatever they want to do in order to push this product, we are there for them. Okay? So we are not looking for an income from the clubs because by the end of the day we want to build this product mm. it should be a, an, to an amazing product mm. okay so uh, uh, this is this is my uh, view on on, on the mm. subject and by the end of the day the management of the league needs to come also to club owners with kpis and to tell them look you need to invest at least x amount of money every yeah. month on yeah. your marketing yes. and if your and if your stadium is not full mm you're getting penalized or something, yeah. or you're not getting the full allocation from yeah, the league. Yeah, yeah. You have KPIs, your club, your stadium needs to be full. This is it. If it would have been in a country with a million people, very difficult to fill up the stadium. Yeah. Different story, Nigeria, 200 million people. We have people yeah. everywhere, kids everywhere. To fill up the stadium, it's not even a question of, of, of quantity. Mm -hmm. You just need to bring them in. Once you send the message that to, to come into the stadium, even if you pay 100 Naira, mm. even if it's free of charge, yeah. just to create this ambience, people will come. Yeah. So this is it. So this is club owners that needs to drive it. The uh, management of the league needs to set for them KPIs and need, we need to deliver the message. And this is what we're speaking. Yeah. This is delivering the message. You know, here's one of the things um, that I find funny about Nigerian football today. You know, I do not know. I hope you, if you're listening to this program and you're a club owner, you've heard, you know, uh, what we have talked about so far. There is not a Nigerian club that I know that has a marketing director, not one. And in the, the role of marketing is about, you know, engaging with your publics, you know, winning new fans, retaining the fans, finding out what the fans' interests are, serving the fans what they need, you know. You can't get, you know, often I find that clubs hire media men to do that. That's not the function of a media man. It's like asking a marketing person to go and be a journalist. They're, they're two completely different fields. The marketing man, the marketing discipline, it's about, you know, um, it's, a, it's a business philosophy that makes you see your entire business operations from the point of view of the customer. So if you have a marketing, if you have a director of marketing, for instance, all he's looking at doing is looking at the numbers today and how to grow the numbers tomorrow and, you know, how to, like he said, um, achieve, your, achieve your KPIs, all right? Even the league doesn't have a marketing director. Who builds the brands at the, at, the, at, at the league level? Who builds the brands at the club level? You know, it's not just um, we know what we want to be. This thing requires technique, and it's technique that some people spend a lifetime acquiring. All right? We're going to go on a short break, and when we return, we're going to be speaking more about the broadcast media and what needs to be done to make the MPFL a success next season. So don't go away. When we return, the business continues.
You're welcome back to uh, Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're watching the program live from our, our studios in Lagos, and the station is Plus TV Africa. We reach about 30 million viewers across the, across the world. Sorry, we reach about 12 million viewers across 30 countries around the world. All right. In the studio with me is Mr. Asha Thierry Alon. He's the CEO of Africa Sport Network. And we're discussing the MPFL, we're discussing the broadcast um, media. And we're talking about all things nice about the MPFL and not so nice about the MPFL. We have talked about one season um, that he's been here. And in this one season, you know, we have seen the league grow. Not because of him primarily, but we're saying that over the last two years, two, two and a half years, uh, following the, the, the um, entrance of GTI Asset Management and Trust Limited, the investment banking firm uh, that has provided financial structure for the league, things are, are, have started to pick up. Um, you know, the games are being played regularly. Um, uh, penalties are being meted out swiftly. The NFF and the MPFL have been also big in, in, in what has happened so far. We've had, we haven't had real controversies. And so it feels like there's uh, some synchronization in what's going on between GTI, NFF, and the MPFL. So much is still to be expected uh, from, from this um, trial. And you, know, you get a sense, if you follow the league last year, that Nigerians are beginning to wake up to their football and um, this is a good thing because now it feels like the MPFL is on track to achieving its monumental potential. All right? So, Asha, next season, um, we are... No, perhaps before we just talk about next season, let's, let's address one little elephant, the elephant in the room. And, Asha, this is really about, you know, the, the, over the last 30 years or so, the last three decades, we have really been impacted by the popularity of the English game, of the, of the European game in Nigeria. Do you understand? So you see small boys in Nigeria. When I was growing up, we, we only knew about our clubs and about our players. You know, it wasn't that the English league was not on television, but we weren't watching it. You know, we we're watching our league and our clubs. You know, all of that has died. The entrance of cable television has opened fans to, you know, better packaged, um, uh, leagues around the world you know how do we get back how do we get back there i mean what do we need to do you think because without fans there's no sports business anywhere in the world how do we win back the fans digitizing easy so first of all uh, the work that we are doing alongside with the popel mm. um, to create platforms that allow the viewers to watch the match mm. that's already something that didn't existed in the previous seasons mm. and once i can watch the match it creates interest okay mm. um, if you see how many people watch the first match match day number one yeah and how many people watch match day 38 you see a very nice uh, rise mm. and you understand that the product is building itself mm. is it have we met the potential we are very far from meeting the potential mm. um, especially in a country of of that size especially mm. also with the diaspora that is that size mm. uh, but this is exactly what we are doing and first of all is allowing the product to be available mm. available and affordable so you don't need to pay a hefty price uh, of a monthly subscription to uh, to watch your favorite club and your neighborhood club and so on and and this is phase number one phase number two this conversation mm. and other medias that will speak about it more and will make the people know that this streaming exists because the match the the as much as we invest in marketing we can't reach everybody. Mm. And I might invest in five campaigns. Half of the country might not see it because they are watching and listening to the radio that we haven't heard of or mm. we are not mm. communicating with. So the more the media will speak about, the more crowd will join. And this is exactly it. It's a, it's a game of numbers. It's a game of 
participation and the fact that we are speaking about it and us working and marketing it and Popel Sport are marketing it and GTI are doing the work as well and slowly slowly you see this cake rising that's that's exactly the process okay what you guys are doing would um, help him bring in some money into the league unfortunately Basile uh, couldn't join because of you know a very important issue we would have wanted to know about the numbers you know what sort of income or revenues have you guys generated in the course of the season and how that you know because your income would determine to what extent we we can feel that next season is going to be either better or poorer all right but let's talk about next season so you know, i'll tell you first of all about income mm. the income of this season is irrelevant to the investment of upcoming season okay upcoming seasons the investment plan has been concluded already the funds exist already mm. it doesn't matter if we made a thousand dollars or one million dollar from this season yeah. it doesn't really matter because the investment for the upcoming season yeah. has been set already is okay? this speaking is this speaking as ASN or speaking as, as um, look I cannot speak on the name of proper sport or even though the proper sport are part owners of, mm. of ASN mm. uh, so they're shareholders and uh, we work closely mm. uh, we have we speak many times every week uh, mm. in order to see how we are building uh, a better product mm. a more robust product for the upcoming season and bringing more solutions and more you name it more publicity more payment options mm. uh, better uh, network uh, better co uh, commentaries everything that we can improve will be improved everything that is good we will maintain uh, its level uh, so this is this is the whole idea of in, of getting better towards the upcoming season and we are bringing many more solutions uh, for the Nigerians in Nigeria for the Nigerians in the diaspora for them to be able to purchase it more easily for them to be able to pay it more easily for the people in Nigeria to buy it um, in a very very affordable way mm -hmm. even more affordable than the season that just ended mm. and uh, allowing also the Nigerians and the African uh, in the African countries not just the ones in the diaspora mm. across mm. the sea the ones that are living in the neighboring countries mm. to be able to watch it and to pay with their own local currencies so there is endless work around it many people are working towards it this mm. league should start towards uh, end of august early mm. september mm. Uh, so we have two months of uh, very hard work um, and we are on it okay one of the things you guys have to do in the new season or, or you let down a lot of fans is getting your slow mo's right you know um getting your your maybe more than one one angle right so that in moments of controversies people can actually see that okay this is what uh, happened from different angles that's number one number two if a fantastic goal is called i want to see it again and again and again if i can during the month that's something that didn't make your coverage of the first season very exciting are you do you feel like next season is going to be better true so this is uh, you know we, we we watch the matches ourselves and mm. i i sit for sometimes for uh, for hours uh, during the night or weekends and i watch the matches that we are broadcasting mm. to see what we can do better mm. and definitely reruns highlights mm. uh, it's something that we need to work on we are working on that mm. okay uh, we have a solution that we are testing at the moment mm. um, production side is uh, more on popular side okay mm. uh, but i know um, that uh, basil is working on that mm. day and night to make uh, our product uh, much more interesting uh, much more advanced mm. to have multiple angles depends sometimes on technology mm. uh, we might have that as well uh, maybe have better zooms um, reruns and highlights this i can tell you um, you'll find it in the upcoming season mm. 
so it will be much more interesting if you missed it mm. you'll be able to watch if you miss the moment yeah, yeah. you'll be able to watch it again and again and again and after the match you'll have highlights that will be pushed uh, automatically uh, things are you know we are taking all the solutions that we can find all the technological solutions that we can find and we are implementing them so mm. if i'm watching the solution or our product 10 weeks ago mm. and 10 weeks from now it will not be the same product mm. it will be the same league more different That's teams right. sometimes yeah. mm. uh, but you'll definitely have um, a better product even if you see it towards the end of the seasons mm. yet towards the end of the season the uh, last must match days you saw the quality it was better than than the, the start mm. uh, so you see that we are improving on any factor the cameras the network mm. uh, the people behind and the technology that is doing the the studio technology mm. so everything that we can improve we are working on that it's an endless it's an endless work because mm. we might implement the technology today that tomorrow uh, will, will be an obsolete technology mm. and then we need to re-implement a new one mm. we are not stopping at any moment we are doing uh, any integration that we can and our teams at the moment I think that at the moment our teams are doing roughly like seven different integration of various te technologies mm. to have for the upcoming seasons to be ready let's say for first of august mm. uh, so that mr and and and, and madame uh, uh, fans mm. will be able to say okay it was worthwhile to pay the this affordable price it was worth it okay so do you have anything like a, a, a figure that um, you guys see yourselves as contributing to the pulse of the league maybe next season in figure in terms of uh, what yeah uh, in terms of i mean look uh, this is not free freebies yeah if 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 you're going to this season i don't know what you made and how how much you contributed to the mpfl you know because i i understand your your agreement is um, profit sharing, you know, is that the case? So the agreement of uh, Propel with the league is, is yeah. not something that uh, is part of ASN. Yeah. So we, are, we have a separate agreement with Propel Sport. Mm. And as I said, Propel Sport are part shareholders mm. in Africa Sport Network. Yeah. Uh, whatever they did as an agreement, even before we started working mm. together and we started working thanks to you because mm. you connected us with with mm. basil back uh, last year mm. so um i cannot comment on that mm. however i can say that the investment that was done in this season mm. was an investment was a very heavy investment from mm. both of us popular mm. sport and africa sport network mm. a very heavy investment because it was a long-term one if we would uh, balance it on one season i would say in, it wasn't worthwhile because it didn't bring the money back mm. okay however if you look at it as a five-year investment four years investment mm. that makes sense mm. because it will bring back um, the revenue that everybody are dreaming about mm. this revenue eventually will come with lots of hard work between mm. us the management of the link proper and the club owners and mm. the media okay i'm happy you said publicly that um I played a part in connecting both of you. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to be sending my invoice to him um, <laughs> later. Anyway, so how do you think that um, how do you think that clubs can um, boost revenues uh, for the new season? Because a lot of our clubs are still government-owned clubs, you know, but even you know, incidentally, one of the best performing clubs last season, if not the best performing club, was Rangers International, Re Enugu Rangers, and they're a government club. They got shirt sponsorships, they got all kind, you know, they got um, uh, better match day revenues and, and the like. They got good partnerships. What would you say that our clubs should do that will make them um, 
you know, depend less on their government or their, their core investors and, and, you know, make some money. So, first of all, where I'm coming from, and if you look at the Western countries, mm -hmm. clubs are not owned by the government. Yeah. Not by states, not by federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a mistake, personally speaking. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the funds of the state should be invested in the general population and not mm -hmm. in creating a, a football club that will be a toy of... Uh, for the fans. Mm. Uh, having said that, a club doesn't matter who is the owner, okay? Mm. A club needs to invest in its heritage, in creating its story, okay? Mm. Once you have a story, people can follow it, people can understand uh, what the club wants, where the club is aiming to go, mm. what's the investment plan, mm. uh, how do we bring the, the grassroots into the stadium as mm. players and as fans okay mm. not everybody can be players mm. but everybody can be fans and um, so a club should invest in its branding in creating its heritage and then to bring fans into the stadium once they are there they need to invest in bringing sponsors mm. a club owner I know that club owners, some of them, have a limited pocket. They have limited means. They cannot finance to the roof, okay? Mm. But they can approach the big brands of Nigeria, and thank God we have many big brands around, to come and support. Uh, and the amounts are not, are not crazy, okay? Uh, and the big brands, they can, they can afford it. At the moment, the big brands don't afford it because for them the product is not interesting enough mm, okay mm. even if you're coming to tell them come and sponsor the matches so uh, it's still not there okay you might have one or two brands that understood the value but all the others at the moment they are still sitting on the fence mm. okay so once this product will be built and then they will see a full stadium they will join the party then once they will join the party it will allow the club owner to monetize and to have fresh money that is entering to the kitty. And uh, if you're asking me, the, the government should uh, sell those clubs and make them private and bring uh, heavy businessmen to be club owners and then they have a different mindset. Mm. Okay? This is it. You know, about, uh, sp about uh, brands, you know, not being hesitant in getting behind uh, football. You know, sometimes I think that, look, um, uh, uh, Asha, if you don't take care of your market, your market won't take care of you. All right? So sometimes you need to do things from the po point of view of enlightened self-interest or um, self-preservation. So sports creates a lot of jobs. Football creates um, takes young people off the streets, it creates a more peaceful society, teaches people to understand um, rules, um, hard work, you know, and things like that. These are values that society needs. If the brands are waiting for some utopic product before they can start investing in our league, I think it's a mistake because then the league don't, doesn't fulfill its potential and then the brands suffer the consequences. For instance, now there's high crime rates, you know, um, Nigerians are investing money, they should invest in these brands and buying foreign sports products and all of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes you don't need to wait until the, until the product is right. Sometimes you need to be a part of building the right product so that you know that when you do that, you're taking care of society, you're making society wealthier, and then society repays that by, by patronizing uh, whatever it is that you have, you have to sell. Asha, we have to start bringing this, this home, you know. And your ASN, Africa Sport Network, what more can we expect from you guys? You know, do you, I see that you have a website, which is uh, maybe your biggest, maybe the platform through which you engage with the public today. Do you have any plans to do radio, to do TV, you know, do you have any, you know, to promote more? Do you have any such plans? So, uh, we have very big plans. Mm. Uh, and if you look at, uh, at our website at the moment, mm. you understand that 
apart from being a sports news website, mm. it's a sports streaming platform. Okay. okay? And uh, our plan is not to be a radio, okay. not to be a TV, okay. but to be a streaming service. Okay. The biggest problem in Africa there is that even if you have a TV at home, in most cases you're not capable of paying the monthly subscription. Yeah. If you pay, even if you pay the monthly subscription, f for 50% of the time you don't have power to switch on your TV. And uh, if you need to consider whether I'll switch on the TV or I'll switch on the fan, in most cases it will be to switch on the fan than to switch on the TV. And then you'll watch the, the, the match uh, on your phone. And this is it. We have a streaming uh, platform and that's where we are growing. Okay? If you are speaking about ASN, so today we have rights for one league plus other league plus other products that we joined and people will be aware and and will get uh, the declaration of that towards the new season mm. uh, and we are aiming to have just more leagues imagine that today we started this nigeria as the first country um, look at us in three four years from now you will have a bouquet of 30 40 african leagues and then you can browse between the leagues watch any match that you want Everything is, will stay affordable. There's no plan, let's say, if today we are charging uh, two, uh, less than $3 per, per month unlimited views, there's no plan to increase the price, mm. even if you want to increase the number of leagues. Mm. So imagine that you can have 10 leagues, 20 leagues, 40 leagues, still in the price that mm. is a fraction mm. of any other operator I around. Mm. And it's available all over the world. I can be a Nigerian and sit in uh, New York and still watch my Nigerian league. Mm. I can be an Al Algerian or Egyptian person sitting in Europe and still watch my local league. Mm. And this is the whole idea. Mm. This is the new generation. Mm. TV eventually will go smaller and streaming will go bigger as long as it stays affordable. Okay? Mm. And this is, this is what we are doing and we are bringing amazing technologies, amazing technologies, especially for our African market, mm -hmm. to allow people to watch the match in, in fraction of costs. Okay, so apart from football, do you have any plans for other sports in Nigeria across Africa? So we have plans for any sports that comes from Africa, mm. and we have plans for any sport that comes outside of Africa so we can broadcast it to Africa, mm. okay? Uh, we have already, apart from the uh, football leagues that we are speaking about, we have around uh, five, five or six other segments of sport that we already engaged with, that mm. we will already have exclusive rights all over Africa mm. uh, to broadcast um, in the upcoming season. Mm. And once we will uh, promote our bouquet for the upcoming season, we'll sit here again and you will tell us that if we did a good job. Mm. But, but these this products that you're talking about, Asha, let me tell you straight away. You know, if these products you're talking about are not about promoting the domestic scene in this country, I'm not talking about them. Yeah? So but I'll, I'll talk about all of those products that you have that promotes sports in Nigeria, that promotes the sports industry in Nigeria. That's, that's what our focus, is, our focus is, right? So we have a deal on that. So we have a deal on that. I can give you a promise, mm. okay? So we are working to buy rights all over Africa, mm. okay? But we are working also to buy rights all over the, the world mm. in order to allow us as African people that lives in Africa mm. to watch sports from all over the world mm. in an affordable price mm. it's not just about what's going it's about what's going on here but yeah. if i can enrich it by content from all over the world there's an added value mm. free of charge mm. just watch it um, because you couldn't watch it earlier it will promote the sport as well but here's the difference asha, asha if you give me a, a foreign product i pay for it yeah if I pay for it, the money is sucked out of my economy and to somebody else's economy. I'm not saying you'll but, pay for it. But what you're doing <laughs> with MPFL, I like. You know why? Because somebody else pays for it overseas 
and it comes into my Correct. economy. That's, Correct. that's why, Correct. and that's what this program is about, Correct. right? And so that's um, our program for today. It's been a very enlightening session with, with um, Asha Thierry Alon, the CEO of Africa Sport Network. This is not his first time on this program, and this is most certainly not his last time um, going to be on this program, all right? Asha, thank you very much for honoring our invitation again, and I wish you all of the best. You have a lot of Nigerians working for you, I imagine. You well, didn't talk about that. You, so uh, let me tell you, we have only Nigerians working for working us. For you. We don't have, we're a company without experts. Mm -hmm. I'm the only expert because I'm, I'm one of the shareholders, a yeah. uh, uh, small part, yeah. and uh, I'm the CEO. Yeah. Uh, but all of our employees, 100%, are from Nigeria, uh, including Nigerians that even left Nigeria mm. to, uh, to do their university across seas, and they stayed our employees. Uh, so all of our investment mm. is done in the country, in the continent, and everything that we are doing is coming to promote the countries within the continent and the African continent. Okay. See why I love the man? He's doing stuff here. It's for creating jobs here, creating wealth here. Anybody who's doing that, you have my platform to spread your message, all right? Uh, but don't expect me to give you a platform to sell the world to Nigeria. I'm looking for a platform to sell Nigeria to the world. On that note, um, I'd like to say thank you for viewing. Um, join us again next Tuesday, same station, same time, as we bring you the, the, the latest and um, yet another exciting package of spot business with Urufo Izaga. Until we meet again next week, this is me Urufo saying, be productive, be good, and stay safe.